Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Greek day today, uh, and I've got six Greek wines in front of me. Five of them are from the Lerarakis Winery in Crete. Uh, I've done some of their reds before, they were pretty tasty, and I've done one of their whites before, it was a sweet one. Uh, but I think all the ones today are going to be dry, we shall see. Uh, but the first one I've got is not from them, it's the Semeli Mantinia uh, Nasiakos, uh, 2011, and the grape here is uh, Moscofilero. So let's just dig in. I've got them arranged vintage order and then alcohol. So this is uh, 2011, weighing in at 12% alcohol. And it's got that fresh grapiness of the Muscat grape. I'm not quite sure when Moscofilero fits into uh, the Muscat family, but it's got that really um, sappy citrus grapiness. It smells like it's going to be delicate, fresh, uh, lively, but refreshing. It's good. And that's just what it is. Clean, fresh, sappy, lovely summer day wine. Um, I don't think you really need to have too much to eat with that. It's, it's really nice by itself. Um, there's some crispness there, um, so if you did want to have it with the munch it with a few nibbles and stuff like that, wouldn't be a problem. But um, uh, but as it is, it's got that nice combination of crispness, but a bit of weight behind it. So you know you're drinking something, but uh, you're not overwhelmed by it. Anyway, let's get on to the Lyrarakis wines. Um, and um, I don't think any of these is available in the UK at the moment, so um, if they're good, well, maybe they might stop sending us some of them. First one is called Plito, uh, P-L-Y-T-O, I think that's the name of the grape variety, and uh, 2011 is it? Uh, we got, yes it is, and uh, weighing in again at 12% alcohol. Can't really tell you a lot about the Plito grape variety, this is probably the first wine I've had made from it. Uh, I stick my nose in there and it smells clean and fresh, but it hasn't got that aromatic lift that, uh, that the first one has. Um, it's, uh, I should probably have done this one first, it feels like it's going to be a, a nice fresh but uh, slightly simple wine. Actually it's a bit better than that. Reminds me of some of those um, uh, southern Italian grapes where it's maybe not amazingly aromatic but then when you come to taste it it's got this um, real presence and weight and uh, a waxy texture, things like walnuts in there so whereas overt fruit maybe isn't its forte, it has got some citrus, it has got some apple, uh, maybe even a little bit, little bit of something uh, a bit more exotic like passion fruit, uh, it's more this textural thing uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that carries through and um, I do like it, yeah I, 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 I do like it. Uh, so. Um, probably like it as much as the first one. I mean, they uh, uh, wines for different occasions. I think that, that will probably uh, need a bit of food to uh, to show it its best because it's got this quite creamy texture. I imagine having something like, like that with a seafood risotto. Mm. Next one, uh, you will see not maybe a finished label, uh, Lerarachis Assertico Inox. That just means it's been uh, fermented in stainless steel rather than it being anywhere near an oak barrel. And I'm presuming it's 2011 in the absence of any other guidance towards what it can be. Now I think of Assertico as being uh, uh, the main grape of Santorini. Uh, some terrific wines made there. Uh, but uh, let's see how it gets on in Crete. There's a crispness and freshness here. Um, it's maybe not as um, tangy and minerally as, uh, as the Assertico I associate with uh, with Santorini, uh, but maybe it feels like it's a bit weightier. So it's more on that um, peachy edge, uh, peach and pear. Maybe a, a comparison would be if uh, the Assertico from uh, Santorini is Sauvignon from the Loire, then this is Sauvignon from Bordeaux. And it's pretty good, actually. Um, uh, what I like about it is it has got the crispness, uh, but it's got this quite a bit of weight behind it. Uh, so maybe I'd, I'd be looking at my Certigo from uh, Santorini as a fish wine, and uh, maybe this is a sort of more white meat wine. But um, uh, what it's got is it's got this pear, the peach, and I was talking about the texture on the previous one. It's got more of that, too. Uh, more presence in the mouth, more richness and roundness. Uh, I'm not sure of the alcohol, as you can see from the label. It doesn't give all that much away. Uh, but um, good wine. I like it. And again, I, uh, the, a lot of those uh, in common with the, uh, those southern Italian wines. Reminds me a bit of, of Fiano. Nice. Uh, next one, uh, it's uh, Octo. Uh, Octo dry white wine. Van Blanc, 2011. Again, 12.5% alcohol. Grapes here. Uh, Villana, which is one of the ones that they use in, uh, um, in Santorini. And, uh, uh, but it's also got white muscat and Sauvignon Blanc in there. Give it a whirl. 
Now, I'm not sure what Villana brings to the party. Um, Sauvignon, I think of as being an aggressive, well, not aggressive grape, but sort of assertive grape. Uh, but it's the Muscat that's really coming through um, in the way that I got that grapey, uh, aromatic character on, on the first one in the Mosca Filero. Uh, here, it's that, yeah, it's that grapiness that's driving it. But maybe there's a little bit of the uh, Sauvignon, more um, herbal, mineral character coming through behind. As I say, I don't, I'm not sure where Villana comes in. Does a rather good impersonation of Gewurztraminer. I mean, that, that combination of the um, uh, the grapiness of the muscat and uh, uh, I, the, the, some oiliness that's come in there from somewhere. Maybe that's the Villana, and um, and then that slight shriekiness of the um, of the Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, I it's okay. Uh, I think I prefer the um, prefer the previous two probably. Um, I, I almost find it's one of those wines that's got uh, a little too much flavour uh, for a wine of this weight. I, I'd want to um, wouldn't, be really, wouldn't be really quite sure what to do with it. Uh, the previous two I'd happy happily sit and uh, slurp away, and I know a lot of people would too. Here I imagine you'd be um, it would be a room divider. Some people will like it and other people will dislike it for precisely the same reasons that um, uh, the first lot do like it. Does that make sense? Ish. Final two. I can't really tell you too much about uh, the, them, uh, apart from, uh, well, Thrapsatiri is a grape variety, and uh, it's, uh, this is 2011, Thrapsatiri, Army Vineyard, I think Army, it's, it's something to do with slopes, I think it's the top end of a slope, uh, one, one of their highest vineyards, and the, as for the Thrapsatiri uh, grape variety, well, this is my first encounter with it, so um, I can't promise to uh, uh, tell you what varietal character I will, I'm expecting, let's just stick my nose in and see where we get on. Intriguing. Uh, intriguing is one of those words that you sort of shove in when you think, I'm not sure whether I like it. And I really am not sure whether I like it. There's some bits of it that I go, hmm, that's really interesting. There's some bits I think, ah, oh, is that a bit over the top? So the interesting bits are um, the waxy walnut skin. I was talking about that character on the, on the Polito. I get more of that here. But it feels like uh, as if they've done a little bit of skin contact here to, um, to uh, I don't know, flesh out the wine. And, um, and maybe in the process got a bit too much, slightly bit tannins out of extracted from the from the grapes also I'm not sure whether it's been near a barrel um, it says on the back this wine can age well uh, blah, blah, blah. it doesn't say anything on the back about a, a barrel but um, uh, I'm just wondering whether there's a little bit of barrel fermented component here and then, as I swirl it, uh, more and more comes out. It's, it's interesting that uh, getting more of those uh, pear and peach characters that I was getting in the Assertico. Um, and uh, this, yeah, richness, grapiness. It reminds me quite a lot of um, some of those blends that people put together in Friuli in, in, uh, uh, in, in northeast Italy. And again, with those, I'm never quite sure. I, I find them distinctive, but I'm never quite sure how much I like them. Lots of power and presence in the mouth. I don't find too much bitterness there, so that, 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 that looks good. Um, and for a desperately young wine, I mean, this 2011, uh, it says it ages well. I can imagine that there, there, it feels like there's some bits in there that are really quite gawky and uh, need to calm down. What I'm not quite sure is where it will end up. Um, so there's this nuttiness, uh, there is this, um, yeah, the pear, uh, the just right peach, more, maybe more on the nectarine, maybe even the green gauge side. Uh, it's like herbiness. Um, I find it, yes, I, I keep, I'm going to use this word again, intriguing. Uh, but I'll keep an eye on that because that's, that's something that um, having, having I not, not come across the wine before, I really not, I'm not sure where it's going and uh, whether I want to follow it there. Final wines, another um, one where I'm really not quite sure what's going on. It's um, to, to the label that says For Foras, which is the name of a village, uh, 2010, wine from old white vine trees. Uh, and the rest of it is all in Greek. Uh, apart, well, there's something on the back that just says 100, so I don't know whether that means the vines are 100 years old or the vine vineyards are at 100 metres. Um, let's just dig in and see where we get. Well, I've just looked at the label of this, and um, whereas the previous ones have been, well, the first four were like 12, 12 and a half percent, then 13. This one's up at 14 and a half percent alcohol, um, and it's quite golden in colour. And, and when I stick my nose in, there's this honeyed, um, yeah, a honeyed, really ripe chirimoya custard apple type of character, um, as if there's some late harvest fruit in there, maybe some apricots there, um, peaches, uh, very ripe crystallised orange, very ripe stroke crystallised orange, um, and uh, 
Yeah, vanilla. It smells intriguing, but not a different intriguing from the one before. Uh, I'll ju I just better taste it, haven't I? Well, it's a big beast. Um, lots of vanilla. Um, it's got this very ripe, juicy, slightly oily tropical fruit. Um, it's good. So it's got the pineapples. It's got the um, the mangoes. A bit of pawpaw. Uh, it's got a slightly fresher edge, but it's very ripe. Very ripe citrus. Uh, very ripe oranges. Um, and it's got some of the waxy walnut that was that I found in some of the previous uh, wines from the, from uh, Lerarakis. Um, my concern, I suppose, is what do you do when you've got a wine that's that's like that? Uh, it's uh, all it, 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 it's like the character of the ripeness is almost that little bit too dominant. Uh, there is this uh, rounded sweetness, and I'm not quite sure whether there is some residual sugar there uh, or whether it's just that high alcohol and the very ripe fruit that's giving the impression of sweetness. Good and uh, fascinating, um, but in terms of the wines that I'd want to go and weigh away and definitely drink tonight, maybe those last two aren't among them. But they're the wines I'm going to sort of keep coming back to over the next two or three days and find out what happens to them. And uh, I will report back because uh, I find them, to use that word again, intriguing. Hope you found this video intriguing and I will see you soon.